so, well, first of all, Kurt Wilson with Beats on Bites. I'm sorry. A real, a real pleasure for me to have my I'm son here. Start. Was, no, it's great. It's great. Uh, the fact that he had an instrument in his hand reminded me of a story. Uh, and the story was that, that way back, uh, of course, everyone's familiar with Nat King Cole. Uh, Nat King Cole had his own TV show, Amazing for the Time. This is, this is the first black American that had a TV show, a variety show, obviously a brilliant performer. Uh, he always had a piano on stage, whether he was sitting at it or wherever, whenever he was singing, because he always felt comfortable if he needed to, he could go to the piano and just play a little bit, because he was brilliant and confident about what he could do on the piano. So he, in his contracts, he always had a piano on stage. So it's interesting that, that we walk on stage, well, in the set here, and of course, Nigel grabs an instrument right away, because that's what musicians do. They play music, and uh, that's where they're comfortable. And so it's like, it must be crazy times right now with, with the fact that uh, you're not able to play live. So you're, yeah, you're, 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 yeah. In, a, you're in a castle yeah. wall, you know, trying to figure out, you know, how do you do music? So what, what have you found the most challenging and what have you, what have you done to sort of uh, go around uh, using the technology that's available today? Well, uh, I've been working with uh, this guy, Sam Small, a, a okay. friend from college, a great writer and uh, a kind, kind, of, kind of like an alternative folk album. And we were rehearsing a ton before the first mandatory lockdown. Uh, we call it the first wave. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But um, uh, it was great to be able to use like digital recording practices to be able to make tracks and send them separately and have it come together and to be able to make a video together uh, where it used kind of the template of like a Zoom conference. But we were all superimposed in because you can't actually play it with the lag introduced there. Yeah, right. I know. It's a bummer. Yeah. There are some programs apparently where there's no lag and you can do that. Better. I heard somebody was talking to me about it yesterday that there's a program to where you can rehearse and record and do all this kind of stuff with no latency. I'll waiting to see it. When I <laughs> waiting to see it. Waiting to see that. I've had that promised yeah. by like three programs. I've stopped yeah. giving applications like that a shot, which is a bummer. But yeah. My heart's been hardened toward lagless uh, communication. Yeah. And beyond that, I've been uh, streaming on Twitch, which is sick. It's super fun. Uh, just big synth rack going at it, playing a bunch of like, you know, my kind of wonky brand of house music. nice to be able to have a live performance with a responsive audience you know with people in the crowd and you can hear when they're yelling um <laughs> that's that's a plus and they're all yelling <laughs> I mean, musicians we, we feed off the energy of the audience yeah. and so that's that's awesome so tell me a little bit about this so you've got a setup to where you have a twitch streaming live that now are these like cover tunes are they uh original tunes what 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 are you actually streaming when you're when you're doing these twitch some some cover tunes like I, I threw in a little Daft Punk. It might not be the right time. I might not be the right one. But there's something about us I have to say. There's something between us anyway. And a bunch of like uh, video game favorites that I've just kind of like, I learned this a couple years ago. I've never forgot it because mm -hmm. it's f formed what I think music should be. So like, you know, I'll throw in one if it feels appropriate, but it's mostly fully improvised sets. It's just a little, I got my role in TR-08. Got the Yamaha DX7, Korg Mini Log. Uh, I had Cynthia, my Roland SH101, which is the crimson oh. crop, best synthesizer in the world. Yeah. Uh, I did go. recently replace it with Behringer's SH101 clone, the MS1, because it's, I mean, 
like an eighth of the cost. So yeah. I don't feel bad about playing it like kind of hard. Because <laughs> Cynthia is kind of like a relic that should be preserved and right, used right. for... Yeah, I should be... I've learned you I should... Take it out of its glass case. Yes. And then, and then play it and put it back. Yeah, you yeah. say this as a joke. No. I, well, <laughs> the fact that you named it. The, you know, that, that, that says I a lot. her. Like I said. Okay, yes. That <laughs> you named her. The synthesizer. Uh, so, and then I've got all that running into my Teenage Engineering OP1. So I can loop it. It's a good setup. It's a fun setup. And it's really conducive to um, having a live set that feels live but can be manipulated as though I were using a DAW without actually having a DAW, which a lot of people use in their streams and more power to you, do your thing. But like, I, I find that that can be a little dull when you're staring at a work screen the whole time. Sure. Instead of a guy frantically trying to not miss the beat because I can't quantize anything. Right, right, right. Yeah. 